Welcome everybody. So in this next video, I'd like to describe basic feasible solutions again, but this time from the geometric perspective instead of the algebraic perspective. The motivation for basic feasible solutions is, is there the tools where we work with when using the simplex method to solve a linear program. Okay, so pretend we're given a linear program in equational form, which means that we have this maximization linear function, and then our constraints are all equality constraints, except that the variables are non-negative. And our, our matrix A is size M by N, which means we have M equality constraints, and we have n different variables. So x is a vector of length n. So I want to quickly review the main definition, proposition, and theorem from last time. A feasible solution, that means a solution that's not negative and solves ax equals b, is basic if you can find an m element subset, capital B, of the numbers 1 up through n, such that the restricted matrix restricted only to those columns has linearly independent columns. And furthermore, the uh, solution vector X is zero in all other variables. So it's a mouthful, but let's, let's go back to an example. Um, here is our matrix A. And here's our vector X and here's our vector B and A is of size two by five. So M is equal to two and N is equal to five. And so a possible basis capital B would be, um, you know, we could take capital B to be columns, say one and three, for example. And that's just because these columns are linearly independent. Okay, and then what is AB? AB is the matrix you get when you restrict to those columns. And we want this to be non-singular, as we've described. All right, so the basic feasible solution, however, is actually X. And in all variables outside of our basis, we need the entries of X to be zero. So in the second, fourth, and fifth entries, this vector has to be zero. Okay. Since those entries are zero, when you multiply A by X, the second, fourth, and fifth columns don't matter. So you can just like cross these out essentially when you're multiplying A by X, just because those columns correspond to zeros in the, in the vector X. So once you've crossed out those columns that no longer matter, I mean, really you can see that the the square matrix that remains is what we've called AB. And, and now since this matrix is non-singular, that determines a unique values for X1 and X3 solving this equation. And um, yeah, so that's our basic feasible solution X. Capital B is our, our basis. So an important proposition, 4.2.2, is that a basis determines at most one basic feasible solution. And I sort of described that just right now. Once I choose a basis, I get, I get these columns. All the other entries of my matrix are, of my vector X are zero. And then the fact that this matrix is non-singular determines X1 and X3 uniquely. So now the entire vector X is determined. Many of the entries are zeros, those not in the basis, and then the remaining variables in the basis get determined by this equation, ax equals b. Okay. And then another theorem that we saw was that if an optimal solution to this linear program exists, then an optimal basic feasible solution also exists. And the main point of this video will be explaining that a little bit more, 
in some sense, basic feasible solutions correspond to vertices of the feasible region. And, um, and whenever a linear constraint is optimized on a polytope, a linear function is optimized on a polytope, it's also optimized at at least one vertex. Wonderful. So everything in the gray box is a recap in some sense from last time. One comment is that nothing about a basic feasible solution depends on this function that we're trying to optimize. Okay, so in this definition of a basic feasible solution, the function we're trying to optimize that depends on C doesn't appear. C doesn't appear in that definition. All right, so in some sense, a basic feasible solution is only a, um, a basic feasible solution for the constraints. What, what you're optimizing doesn't uh, affect whether a solution is a basic feasible solution or not. Okay, so we have to do a mental shift right now. We're almost gonna think of C as more of a variable, okay? We're gonna be sort of choosing C in the arguments that come in the rest of this video. All right, and one more aside, I wanna tell you what a um, vertex of a polyhedron is. All right, so here's my polyhedron. You can tell, you know what the vertices are, right? This oct octahedron has six vertices. The cube in my picture has um, eight vertices. But let me give you a mathematical characterization of what a vertex is. So X in this convex polyhedron P is a vertex. If there's some direction C that you were allowed to pick, with the following property. So C transpose X is supposed to be strictly bigger than C transpose Y for all other points Y in the polygon, except I better remove this vertex X. Right? I certainly can't have C transpose X strictly bigger than C transpose X. So how do we think about this geometrically? Um, C determines a direction, and then C transpose Y tells you how far along Y is in that direction. All of these points in this plane are just as far in the C direction as X is. So this plane is all of the points that satisfy, it's all the plane of all the points Y satisfying C transpose Y equals C transpose X all those points Y are exactly as far in the C direction as X is. By contrast, every other point in this polytope is not as far in direction C, okay? So we're describing vertices as being points where there's a direction and that direction isolates that, that point as the furthest point in the polytope in that direction, you know? You can't do that for points on a long an edge because this direction that you find for an edge, all the points on that edge would be just as far in that direction. So whenever we say X is a vertex, that means there's at least one direction C satisfying this, and there might be multiple directions, right? Certainly I could rotate my direction and several different directions could isolate out this point just as well. Questions? Okay, our main theorem for this video is given a linear program in equational form, X is a vertex of the feasible region if and only if X is a basic feasible solution. So this is on the left, this is something geometric, being a vertex of the feasible region. This is relatively algebraic, right? There's a basis, et cetera. This if and only if symbol, if you're not a math grad student, you know, this means if and only if. The notation with the double arrow is nice. It's saying the thing on the left implies the thing on the right and the thing on the right implies the thing on the left. 
So let's prove this theorem. We're going to prove both directions of this implication um, one at a time. So the first direction follows from theorem 4.2.3, which is right now at the top of my screen. Okay, so we're trying to show that if X is a vertex of my feasible region, pretend this is my feasible region for a uh, linear program, then X is a basic feasible solution. So, um, right, okay. So we're going to choose C to be the, direct, the direction vector giving that X is a vertex. All right. So we're choosing this C right here. Okay. X is a vertex. So we know there's some direction where C transpose X is strictly bigger than C transpose Y for any other point Y in our feasible region. Okay. Now, take that C, right, and use that C as the C in your optimization function, right? I'm thinking of the C a little bit as a variable because basic feasible solutions don't depend on the optimization, the function that we're trying to optimize. So, so from my vertex X in the feasible region, I got this direction C. And now I'm considering the linear program where I'm not changing any of the constraints given the feasible region, but I am changing this optimization function. I'm choosing the optimization function to be that direction. Why is theorem 4.2.3 helpful? Well, this theorem says that if an optimal solution exists, then an optimal basic feasible solution exists. X satisfies this property. C transpose X is strictly bigger than C transpose Y for all other Y in our feasible region. So X is certainly an optimal solution to that optimization problem, depending on C. And now this theorem says, if I have any optimal solution, then there's an optimal basic feasible solution, but X is the only possible solution. So X is basic feasible. Questions about that? I think it's a cool argument. It's a little, um, it requires you to shift your perspective a little bit. I'm also cheating in some sense that we didn't fully prove this theorem 4.2.3, but that's okay. All right, let's do the other direction. So now we're going from right to left. We need to show that if we have a basic feasible solution, then that X is also a vertex of the feasible region. So let X be a basic feasible solution with basis B. We're gonna define this direction vector C by letting its coordinate CJ be zero if J is in the basis and otherwise be negative one, okay? So I'm using my basis to define a direction vector. What is C transpose X? Well, <clears throat> X is zero in all of the entries that are not in the basis. So C transpose X is just gonna be zero, right? Because it can only be non-zero in these entries where C is non-zero but X is zero in all of those entries. And now we're gonna use proposition 4.2.2. Well, okay. So proposition 4.2.2 is gonna imply that C transpose Y is strictly less than zero for all feasible 
y that are not equal to x. So <clears throat> if I have if I have a, a, a solution y that's non-zero in any of these entries, then when I take c transpose y, I get something negative. Okay. And proposition 4.2.2 says you'll, you can only have one basic feasible solution corresponding to any given basis. So any other feasible solution is, is positive in some of these entries, not in the basis. And then when I take this inner product, I therefore get something negative. So we're then done, right? I've sort of satisfied the definition of a vertex. Um, X is now a vertex because I've found this appropriate direction C where C transpose X is strictly larger than C transpose Y for any other um, point Y in my polyhedron, which here is the feasible region. That might be the first proper proof we've mostly done together. Questions? All right, if not, thanks for your time and attention. And next we'll use basic feasible solutions in performing the simplex method. <laughs>